Hey guys, welcome back. So I hope you've been enjoying the videos that I've been posting. Honestly, I'm just posting them to kind of keep morale up, <laughs> so to speak. Um, my own and yours. Um, and to keep a little sanity right now uh, in the quarantine. And it sucks. It really does. Um, but with all that being said, there is a crazy amount of shortages right now, like toilet paper, paper towels. Thank God I stocked up on that before all this happened because I was moving. Um, but anyway, one thing I have noticed, there's a big shortage of is bread. Um, and I find that, I find it kind of interesting that people are like running out to the stores and buying all this stuff and going crazy. And I'm like, it's not going to keep. I'm like, you're buying like six months worth of groceries and throwing them in your fridge and everything's going to go bad and you're going to throw it out and then you have to go back to the grocery store anyway. What are you doing? Seriously. Stop it. Because you're making it to the point where people can't buy anything. Like, you go to the store and the shelves are empty. So anyway, I'm going to show you guys today how to make a bread that I absolutely love because I'm a big Indian fan. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make naan. It's super simple to make. Um, it makes about, the recipe we're going to do today makes about 10 pieces and that will keep for about a week, week and a half, just depending on how you store it. Um, I use dry storage for most of my bread, but with this, I'm going to put it in the fridge and then reheat it periodically whenever I need it. Um, but we're going to make naan today and we're going to have fun doing it. Yay! So today we are going to be using the trusty KitchenAid for sure. Uh, so ingredients down there. Do, 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 do. You also need a rolling pin. Not only good for making bread, also good for chasing people away during the quarantine. Ah! So if you're using a KitchenAid, I don't recommend using a mixer for this because it's just not strong enough to mix the dough. Um, you can do it by hand. You can kind of whisk all your dry ingredients together and then knead everything else by hand once you get it in there if you don't have a KitchenAid. Um, but with using the KitchenAid, the first thing we're going to use is going to be this attachment to mix your dry ingredients. And then once your dry ingredients are mixed, we're going to switch to the dough hook. So all our dry ingredients are in here, so we're going to turn the KitchenAid on and mix this first. Make sure you run this in the lowest setting, because if you just turn it on high, it will shoot everywhere. You do not belong on the counter. Now I have to re-sanitize everything. Hey, off the counter. Go. Thank you. By the way, did I mention I've never made this before? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. That's fine. Make it up as you go. Oh, also with your dry ingredients, you want to throw your herbs in now before I throw all the wet stuff in. You're going to definitely with your herbs in. Now with the herbs, you can put whatever you want in there. I use parsley, cilantro, bay leaves, and garlic. Um, but you can use like dill. You can use... Um, uh, like rosemary, thyme, you can use a lot of different stuff. It kind of just depends on your palate and what you're wanting to, what you're wanting to taste like. Now, once all your dry ingredients are combined, this is a little hack I have. You can put like a bowl in here and push it down and then take it out and that makes like a nice little hole for you to put all your wet ingredients in. And now is when you're going to switch over to your dough hook. All right, we're going to dump our wet ingredients in that center. And then we're going to turn it on and let it mix. Make sure you put your log on too. So that's going to mix now for about three to five minutes. So you see it's starting to combine everything. You're going to want to take a spatula and scrape the sides down so that way everything gets combined. If you have a problem where it's not combining completely um, and you have a lot of dry ingredients, like you can add a little bit more milk. Um, I poured about a quarter cup in here. I'm only going to add like a tablespoon at a time to, to get it to the right consistency. This is what you want it to look like. Now we're going to go ahead and put this into a ball and let it rest for 10 minutes. All right, so that's resting now. I've got a timer set for 10 minutes and we're just going to wait now. This is what I'm going to do for the next 10 minutes. What? Animal Crossing is calling my name. Something else you can do while you're waiting is preheat your oven. You're going to preheat to 350. So the timer just went off, so now we're going to go ahead and roll our dough out. Yee, I'm so excited! Rolling your dough out, you are going to want to put some flour on your counter. 
make sure you cleaned it first. I did because there was cats on it. Um, but you're going to want to put some flour out. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Come on. Um, and then, oh, I put a lot. Never mind. We're doing good there for a second. You're going to want to spread this out. Kind of try and do it evenly. Oh. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to break off little balls about this size. Put that down. And you're going to start rolling them out. You want them to be about an eighth of an inch. Um, so about that thickness there, if you can see that. Um, and what's going to happen is they're going to rise a little bit because of the baking, the baking powder that we put in there. So we're going to set these to the side and we're going to roll the rest of them out. Yay! And once you're done, you'll be covered in flowers, so that's fine. Um, just keep going. Don't worry about it. So once you're done, you should have a stack of non like this. Next step is cooking spray. So you want to make sure to use a cooking spray because it will stick to the pan otherwise. After you spray your sheet pan, you're going to go ahead and spray the top of the non with a little bit of olive oil spray or brush on a little bit of olive oil because otherwise they're not going to burn on top. So I don't really know how long they're supposed to cook, so we're just going to watch them. I set them, most of the stuff I found online was like two minutes, so I set them for 90 seconds, and we're going to check them in a minute. 90 seconds wasn't enough. They're starting to puff up. Na, 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 I raised the temp on the oven to 400 to cook them a little bit quicker, because 350, they were in there for like 10 minutes, and they weren't cooked in, enough, so we're going to raise it up to 400. I'm Mr. Oven Mitt. Always use me when you are opening the oven. Bye, guys! So I just turned them on to broil, and we're going to wait a minute and see what happens, because they're not browning on top like I want them to. Okay, so, figured it out finally. Ha! <laughs> like I said, I've never made these before, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Anyway, um, so, 400, 4 minutes, then switch it to broil for a minute and a half, and that will get that crispiness on top, that brownness. Yay, non! And that, my dears, is how you make non. So once again, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, I will be posting more as usual because I have nothing else to do but be stuck in quarantine. Mmm, non, so good. All right, I'll see you guys later. This video is brought to you by Cat on a Mouse Pad.